safety search for juvenile diabetes. Uh, our babies need a cure. Well said. I'll let you get back to your phones. All right, 893-3232. Jay, Vicki? Thanks, Rick. More than a million Americans have type 1 diabetes. Nearly 200,000 of those patients are younger than age 20. Yeah, for a Shelbyville family, uh, type 1 has hit them twice. WLKY's Carolyn Callahan shares their story. Um, they're two of the strongest kids I know for dealing with what they deal with. There's one thing that's always on the minds. We never get to quit. It's all the time. Of Sophie and Wyatt Hurst. We know how to change our pod, but we're still kind of working on our sensor, which kind of is strong. But I think I'll learn it eventually. Both have type 1 diabetes. It just, it never stops. So if it's 4 a.m. or 4 p.m., we are thinking diabetes all the time because every minute matters um, to make the right decision. Wyatt was diagnosed first. His parents noticed he was having bathroom issues and was really thirsty. And Sophie had the same symptoms and the same diagnosis. In the beginning, it was um, a shock. There was probably a state of depression for me as a mother. The family has found support through JDRF. It's connected them with other families and helped them navigate through tough times. We've seen what the positivity that JDRF has had on our lives, friends' lives, and um, that's why we're so committed to it. Each year, the Hursts host a pumpkin run at their family farm in Shelbyville. The family-friendly event raises money for JDRF. We've had such great support from the community um, and uh, hope that this year will be, you know, one of our biggest years. There's nothing easy about type 1 diabetes. Um, insulin is a lifesaver, but it could also be deadly. And so it's not just a guessing game with insulin. You have to make the right decision every time. Too much or too little is very dangerous. The Hursts make sure Wyatt and Sophie understand as much as they can about type 1 and what's going on with their bodies. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, and with the help of JDRF, technology is always advancing, which is huge. But different stages of life bring different challenges for them. And the kids know, while they have to deal with this struggle, they're not alone. Sometimes I go to the nurse and I like see all these people that have harder problems than us. And I think we're not the only ones and there's other people that need help too. The Hearst family joins us now here in the studio. Dad Josh, Mom Malia, Sophie, and Wyatt, thank you all for coming in. It's great to see you again. Tell us a little bit about how this is a big part of your lives, but how difficult is it to manage, or is it not at all? You've, you've become accustomed to it. Accustomed is not really a word that I think we'll ever say. Um, it's, it's been a hard journey for us. We've definitely gotten better. We've become more of a team. I think together, um, but it's been five years for us. Wyatt was five years old when he was diagnosed. So, uh, and then she was eight. So it's been five years total. We've gotten better, but we're not perfect. And not, unfortunately there is no perfection in diabetes, but um, we have seen the progression of um, technology come a long way. And that's one of the reasons that we fight. We fight for a cure, obviously, but um, the technology has been a big help. We were at a point where we were pricking fingers uh, 10 times a day per child. Um, and then shots that many times as well. And so with the technology through the help of JDRF, actually, we have um, advanced in that so we don't have as much of a struggle. It's easier for them. So you, you guys are pretty happy about the advance in technology, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice to not have to take shots anymore. Right. All you have to do is push a button now. So. <laughs> okay. Now, now, Dad, it, it's very evident that JDRF is, is a, a huge influence and just uh, is helping you guys out throughout the course of your family life, your work life, and what have you. Um, but you guys are also doing something major for the cause. You guys have a big time event coming up as well, right? Talk a little bit about that. We do. Uh, my wife's family has a farm in Shelby County called Galron Farms. A lot of people are familiar with that in the fall season, uh, hay rides, pumpkin patch, uh, that sort of thing. And we've put on a uh, 5K and 10K race out there the last couple of years, and uh, we're doing that again this year. And uh, we've got some friends that put on the race, and they donate proceeds uh, to JDRF uh, from that race. 
and uh, we have a pretty good time with it. So, what's the cost of people to come out? Uh, it's I believe it's thirty five dollars a runner for early registration, and then the ten K's got some different pricing too on that. But it's a beautiful run. You go th- through a you know seven hundred acre farm and get to run through the fields and you know down the roads and that sort of thing. So it's a good time. Sounds yeah. like fun. What do you do with that registration fee? Pardon me? What happens to that registration fee? Do you donate into JDRF? They do, yeah. The friends of ours put on the race, and they donate that back to JDRF. So, yeah, it's, yeah. And, Mom, I'm told besides the race, there's also a lot of family-filled fun time events going on. Talk a little bit about that. That's the best part of this event is because we are raising um, a lot of good money for this cause, but it's a fun day, and you can bring your family out. You don't really have to be just a runner. Um, There's pony rides. There's hay rides, the pumpkin patch. There's jump pillows. It is a ton of fun. So we always have a good time. All right. Got a graphic up for more information about this. There you go. You can get that in. Mom, I just quickly want to ask you, when Sophie was diagnosed at 8 after Wyatt at 5, were you surprised? We were shocked. Shocked. It was probably one of the hardest days we've had to deal with. And you say it's not uncommon for siblings to both have diabetes. I don't exactly know what those odds are. I, I I don't know another family personally, but we have read many stories of of siblings. So um, it it definitely makes things harder. The only thing I can say that is truly positive about that is they don't feel alone. So they're kind of a team. Well, you guys look great. I know you're happy. You're going to have a great uh, race. And uh, we appreciate you coming into WLKY and talking to us. All right. Rick, let's send it over to you. All right. Thanks, Vicki. I remember when Sophie and Wyatt were little bitty and they helped me over here. We need you put them into action uh, once again just a second. Sharon Stivers called in with a $50 pledge for us to help JDRF tonight. We want to thank Belinda Hickman. She called in with a $50 pledge in memory of her, in uh, memory of her father, Herman Slayton. And Judith Ann Tong called in with a $50 pledge tonight for her friend, uh, Kathy Weber. Thank you so much. And Steve Hagerman called in with a $50 pledge. Marty and Rosemary Feller called in $25 pledge for us tonight. Thank you so much. Carl uh, Morstad, Max, called in with a pledge of $25 uh, for his grandson in California. And Diane Anderson called in with a $25 pledge to our JDRF telethon tonight. Again, the number 893-3232. Diane called in a $25 pledge. Also, Val Beck called in a $25 pledge. Daniel Crawford, $25. Thank you so much. And Cynthia McCormick with a $20 pledge. You've probably seen old Rufus. Let me borrow Rufus here. for This is Rufus the bear with diabetes. Uh, this is for kids to get accustomed uh, that have diabetes, and they have different spots on their arms where they can do uh, shots or get checks, and there's one uh, down here in his belly for all the monitors. So that's Rufus uh, that helps kids who are diagnosed with diabetes. 893-3232 is the number to call. Keep all of our caring volunteers working. We have a phone here that's not lit up. We need two that's not lit up. Let's get them going. 893-3232. We're here till 8 o'clock. Vicki, Jay? Thanks, Rick. The annual JDRF One Walk is JDRF's flagship fundraising event. Yeah, joining us right now is Trisha Pott. She's the manager of the walk and is here to tell us a little bit more about the walk coming up in October at Churchill Downs. Now, exactly what day is the walk? Saturday, October the 19th. Okay, because I have to be there for that. You do. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) we're counting on you. How successful is this? You have thousands of people come out every year? Oh, thousands. Our Louisville Walk site, which is at the historic Churchill Downs, uh, draws anywhere from four to 5,000 participants each year. That is great. And besides just the walk, I mean, we have a lot of different events going on throughout the course of the morning and early afternoon, t-shirt contests, things like that. Talk a little bit more about that. We have a whole host of things that happen out on walk day. Um, Of course, we have the walk itself, but we have basically a family fun day, bounce houses, kids craft activities. Something new we're doing this year is a team captain parade where each team will get to have a moment at the stage to talk about why they're there. It's very exciting. Um, We also have um, some entertainment um, and some special surprises for folks who fundraise. Do you have to be a member of a team to come out or if you're listening tonight you're not a part of a team can you come out? No you can come out as an individual or you can form a team. A team is really just more than one person so you can register as an individual. That means we can make a team. You can that's right. (laughs) So all we ask is that you go to walk.jdrf.org and register. It's that simple. There's no minimum to be involved. Or you can just 
come that morning as well. And yes. what time do you recommend people to come out and people, get going? People begin arriving at 10 a.m. Okay. and the walk will go off at 11. Tricia, how much money do you raise at this event each year? Well, our goal this year is $545,000 for our Louisville walk. So we will raise that. <laughs> Confidence. Yes. Confidence, that's right. Absolutely. Uh, besides the walk, of course, a little bit later on down the road, we have more big time events going on. We have the gala coming up. That's, Talk briefly about that. That's true. Well, we have two galas that our chapter does. Um, our Lexington Gala, which is on November the 15th, and our Louisville Gala, which is February the 28th, okay. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we certainly wish you the best of luck Thank at the you. walk. We want to also mention that Lexington, there is a walk there as well, September yes. 28th at UK's Kroger Field. If you can't make it here to the one at Churchill Downs, certainly take part in that. I'm sure that's huge yes. as well. We offer, we welcome you at one, both, or, you know, either. Yeah. We want to see you at the walk, right, in yes. October. Absolutely. See you there, Churchill Downs. Be there, be square, right? right. <laughs> and, of course, all information and links to register for those walks are on the JDRF website. Tricia, yeah. thank you so thank much. Thank you all. All right. Hey, we need to get the phones ringing, right, Rick? What's going on? Let's do it. Let's keep these pledges coming in. Shonda Gathright, Jay, called in with a $20 pledge for us tonight to help our efforts with JDRF. Todd Rhodes, a $20 pledge. Thank you so much, Todd. And uh, Nancy Booker and Larry, they called in with a $20 pledge tonight. Elizabeth Everday, a $20 pledge. Thank you. Does not matter how small or how large it is. We appreciate all donations to help us out here. Uh, Carla Gari with a $20 pledge. Kamala Gari with a uh, $10 pledge tonight. And Tammy uh, Boynton with a $1 pledge. Like I said, we'll take any amount. $1, $20, $10. Uh, I was going to talk to Brooklyn here in just a second. She goes to E-Town High School. This young lady is 14 years old. She has been uh, dealing with diabetes for the last five years. And since she gets her pledge done, we'll, we'll talk to her. Keep the phones ringing. 893-3232. The money that uh, is raised here, 80% of all the funds go to research for uh, diabetes. So it's an important uh, cause here tonight to help us with research and hopefully one day we will get rid of diabetes type 1 diabetes uh, keep calling in. she's talking to someone here let's see mary fulkerson is calling in with a 100 hundred dollar pledge so we like to hear those phones ringing keep them going often 893-3232 we are here tonight until eight o'clock <clears throat> I was going to wait for Brooklyn, but I'll, we'll have to talk to you in a second. Smile for the camera, at least. There you go. Beautiful smile. 893-3232. Jay, Vicky. All right, Rick, thanks so very much. It's all about making type one, type none. That's what we're striving to do. Hey, for most people supporting JDRF, it's personal. Either they or someone they love has type one diabetes. Morgan Lentis introduces us to a man who did not really know what the disease was until 2016. She explains how finding a cure became his passion project. To fully understand Jimmy Fisher's dedication to JDRF. I do not have type one diabetes. You need to know two things about him. I love to cycle. I am all over the city on my bicycle. And he works at Ford. And they sent out an email uh, recruiting cyclists to join a bi corporate bicycle team to do a ride in Lake Tahoe. So it was a 72-mile ride around Lake Tahoe. Uh, it was a fundraiser ride. Benefiting JDRF. That's when Fisher's education on diabetes began. It's not a lifestyle choice. Uh, these, these kids, uh, young adults, they, um, it just happens. He did that first ride around Lake Tahoe in 2016. Three years and countless miles later, Fisher can't seem to stop. When asked why he does it, he said this. I kind of fell in love with all these people. He says meeting families affected by the disease taught him how lucky he is. Um, they're all really good people. I mean, the children, they, here I was sitting in my first ride, I'm sitting there and um, here's this little 12 year old kid sitting there counting carbs on his plate. Every encounter provides perspective and more importantly, motivation to keep going. Fisher is constantly fundraising and recruiting other Ford employees to help in his efforts. This October, he'll attempt his most ambitious goal yet, raising awareness about diabetes research while competing in his first Louisville Ironman. Hopefully sometime before midnight, uh, if he crossing the finish line wearing this tri-suit. 
The moment will couple his love for cycling with his newfound commitment to finding a cure. He hopes someday he'll ride for a different reason. You know, hopefully in a few years we can have a, a victory tour, you know. We can, you know, be no more type one, but all my friends I've made around the country, we can still get together and ride and say, hey, we made a difference. Jimmy joins us now in the studio to talk about his efforts to raise money and his awareness for JDRF. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you. How many races have you taken part in for JDRF? Just completed my 10th ride this past weekend. We were in uh, Sonoma, California, had uh, over 650 riders, and we raised $3.1 million. Wow. That's amazing. Plus great scenery out there as well. It was well. gorgeous, absolutely, right through Napa Valley up to the uh, Pacific Ocean. Now, Jimmy, you said that uh, you knew very little about type 1, D, by, type 1 diabetes, that is, that is uh, when you started this journey. What are some of the uh, more surprising things you've learned about the disease? Well, when I first found out, it's, uh, it's not a lifestyle choice. Um, these kids are young adults that are diagnosed with type 1. Uh, it just happens. It's an autoimmune disease. Yeah. It's not because uh, they had too much sugar or, you know, ate all the Halloween candy. Nothing, you know, there's... there's no rhyme or reason. They just end up with an autoimmune disease with type 1. Their pancreas shuts down. Ten races under your belt. You say, okay, race is not enough. Now let's do an Ironman. Tell us about those goals. Yep. Uh, this year I will be completing my first Ironman. Uh, right in the middle of actually I'll be doing my 11th ride in Amelia Island, Florida the weekend before Ironman. And then I'll do 100 miles across Death Valley the weekend after all for JDRF. So I hope to complete uh, the Ironman Louisville sometime before midnight. <laughs> that's that's the goal. Uh, wearing um, a JDRF tri suit. So right. I hope to bring more awareness and uh, maybe raise a few more bucks. So Speaking of awareness, is it getting easier to get more and more people involved in what you are exactly doing? It is, actually. Um, we've grown our team uh, exponentially, actually. Uh, a few years when I started, we had a few people, and we've grown our team probably about uh, 400% probably. So we're growing. And uh, I hope to one day uh, compete with Southwest Ohio. They're always the ones that show up with the largest team. Oh, I so I, I really hope that our Kentucky team shows up with uh, a lot more riders eventually. Do you find more people that you talk to know are more aware of type 1 diabetes? They are, actually. Um, before, actually, when I first started, I had, again, I had no idea what type 1 was. And then after knowing and then get to talking, I mean, I've got people, um, I had people on my son's ball team, you know, I had little brothers with type 1. I had a uh, parent. I had a parent on ball team with type 1. Uh, one of the good, nice ladies I work with, her daughter was diagnosed with type 1 in the middle of me doing all of this. So it's, uh, yeah, I have. It's, it's more common, unfortunately. Yes, ma'am. All right. Jimmy, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. it. If you're interested in taking part in one of the JDRF rides to cure diabetes, as Jimmy's involved in, there are three more races this year in Saratoga Springs, New York, Amelia Island, Florida. Jimmy says he'll be there and Death Valley, California. But if you cannot make one of those, there's also a virtual rider program that you can sign up for to raise money while you bicycle around your own neighborhood. Go to JDRF.org to find out more about the Ride to Cure Diabetes. I think Rick has a special guest over there. All right. He's been trying to talk to this lady. <laughs> I got all kinds. No, Brooklyn is still on the phone, oh, is which is a phone? good okay. sign. Oh, okay. Brooklyn Reams from E-Town still taking her calls. So I brought in backup. I've got Trista Huber here. You recognize her. She's a cheerleader at Fairdale. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Oh, I'm great. Now, you have been battling diabetes for how long? Almost six years now in January. And so what is your message to the folks out there? Hopefully that we get a cure one day because it's a really horrible disease for everybody and that it's just a tough battle to do every day and it's honestly a struggle. So this helps so much that we're actually getting calls, getting donations to hopefully get a cure one day. Well said. That couldn't have done a better cheer than myself. Thank you, Trista. <laughs> Brooklyn helping us here. Uh, Sharon, you said, uh, is Sharon, correct? Cheryl. Cheryl, you said you have a, a child with diabetes? Well, she's not a child anymore, but oh. she was a child when she was diagnosed. But it's still, you're still in here fighting the good fight. Fighting for it, yeah. Been All a long time. 893-3232 right. mm -hmm. is the uh, number to call. Toya Waters called in with a $25 pledge for us. Also, we got a $40 pledge from uh, Judy 
Couch Hughes. Uh, this is in memory of her late husband, Jesse Couch Jr. Herb Moore called in with a $50 pledge. Thank you so much, Herb. Uh, Fred Sheehan called in with a $50 pledge. Thank you. Rodney uh, Hagman with a $25 pledge in honor of Timmy. And Kathy Goodlett called in with a $100 pledge. Thank you, Kathy, in honor of Kenny Goodlett. And Diane Guyton and Pat Shell. In memory of Angela, who has diabetes, a $20 pledge tonight. And Norma Leachman called in with a $50 pledge. Ashley, how you like the way I'm just throwing all my papers on top of you? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Ashley Wolf's putting up with it. She'll be swatting me pretty soon. David Burton Jr. called in with a $50 pledge. Thank you. And Mary Fulkerson, a $100 pledge. All right, get them out of your way, Ashley. Keep those phones ringing, 893-3232. Help us out here uh, fight type 1 diabetes. Jay, Ford, Vicky, Ford Kentucky Truck Plant is a huge supporter of JDRF with events held throughout the year to raise money. We were there for the 20th annual JDRF Golf Scramble in June at the Covered Bridge Golf Club in Sellersburg, where the 250 golfers took part in this event. And there's another golf scramble hosted by UAW Ford Kentucky Truck Plant at Belterra Casino Golf Course on October 5th. Jay, you cannot have the day off and go. Uh, we'll talk about that <laughs> one. All right. Hey, another big event that Ford KTP hosts every year is the JDRF Awareness Ride and Poker Run. Hundreds of motorcyclists come out, uh, or they came out earlier this month for an annual ride which begins at the plant on Chamberlain Lane and ends at Mike Lennon's restaurant. This year, they held a second ride from Bluegrass Harley-Davidson to Rising Star Casino. In total, over $10,000 was great. raised for JDRF. Isn't that great? That is fantastic. Hey, joining us right now is Joe Blasis, who's the local ride chair, a member of the board of directors uh, for the Kentucky chapter of JDRF, as well as a senior supply chain analyst at the Ford Kentucky truck plant. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank Joe, you. Ford has a long history of helping JDRF. How did this begin? Uh, it began with uh, Edsel and Cynthia Ford, who are uh, executives up in uh, Dearborn. Their son, uh, Albert, was diagnosed at the age four, I believe, and, and those two got behind the, uh, the cause then. I believe Cynthia is on the international board of directors. So uh, Dearborn in the corporate area has always been big on supporting it. And uh, I've been at Kentucky Truck for 20 years, and, and every year I've been there, it's always been a big, uh, big cause for us. So it's been fun to be a part of and, and something I'm very proud of uh, us supporting so well. Yeah. And with that personal connection you just mentioned, going forward, what are some additional plans you guys have in supporting JDRF? Uh, one thing that was kind of unique this year that you, that you may mention in a second, Andrew Tapp, our plant manager, is the corporate chair for the uh, One Walk that's coming up in October. We hosted an executive breakfast about a month or so ago to kind of try to recruit some other corporate partners to join us and help the cause and had a lot of success with that event. So along with all the work that we're doing at KTP, we want to try to get other corporate partners involved as well and, and uh, get the word out and get more support going. So the Kentucky Truck Plant is the largest corporate team in the world raising money more than 200000 every year. Yeah. How much do you, how do you go about raising that much money? I mean, you come up with different ideas or yeah. what, you know, the uh, golf scramble, what? A lot of different events all through the year. You mentioned a couple already with the golf scramble and the, uh, the motorcycle poker ride. Right. We do an old time uh, car and motorcycle show. Uh, there's just, there's things going on all year. Um, we, we do a, a raffle of a Mustang, uh, throughout the course of the year. So we'll show up at the state fair or different events selling raffle tickets. So somebody either wins a Mustang or, or a cash option if they choose to do that. So there's just, there's things constantly going on where we're trying to engage the community and fun events to come out and, and help us support the We can the tell cause. you're having fun with this and oh, success yeah. because it sounds like you all are sitting around a card table going, what can we do now? What's our next challenge? Yeah, I mean, the goal is to kind of be creative and good. find fun things to get, to get people involved, obviously. So yeah, we, we've done a good job. Our team there has done a great job and the UAW, offers awesome support. You know, the 8,000 people there at the plant are all uh, involved in the cause. And when we get behind a good cause, it's it's hard to stop KTP. And it's easier to give money when you're having fun too, Absolutely. right? You know? Absolutely. Right, I'm gonna put the spotlight on you now. You ready for this one? Uh -huh. You said yeah. that, you know, we need more corporations involved. We really do to get as much money as we possibly can sure. to make type one, type none. What would you say? What, what would be uh, your recommendation to get more of these uh, corporations involved? I think I think what gets people involved is when they start asking around and talking to their teams. They realize that they have 
employees or fellow team members right. that either have or know somebody very close that has has this disease and deals with there, there there cannot be a company out there or even a small group that that isn't touched by this disease so you know my daughter my wife heather's here with me my 19 year old kaylee was diagnosed when she was 10. Uh, there's just there's so many people that, that touch this disease. You know, you talked about 1.25 million people. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. So every company, I will guarantee you, is touched by this disease in some way. So it's a very easy cause to get behind. So you were involved in this fundraiser before you had a child with diabetes. I was. I, when I first started at KTP, we used to do gate collections, you know, catching employees coming in through the gates in the morning at like 5.30 in the morning. And it's kind of ironic, but we sold Krispy Kreme donuts as a fundraiser. And you kind of think, wow, we're, we're selling these. <laughs> but, but it's another fun way to get, you know, it right. raises money. So yeah, it's donuts, but it raises money. So, and I remember meeting, this was in like 1999, a little four-year-old boy and his family and, and hearing this, the story right. for the first time. I didn't know anything about it. And learning what that family went through was just, it was very eye-opening. And then fast forward to 2010 and you know, we as a family learned it too. It's it's yeah. a very shocking thing to kind of go through at the beginning, and and JDRF was there from the from the start for us. We got the bag of hope. You know, Rick mentioned Rufus a second ago. Rufus was in the bag of hope along with a lot of other resources. JDRF has done a great job of pointing us in the right direction toward doctors or other resources that we need. So it's just been. It's been a very easy group to get behind because they've helped us so much. You know, like I knew it before Kaylee was, was diagnosed, but I really learned after, exactly. after we started down that road. Exactly. Joey, yeah. thank you for being with us. Sure Certainly thing. appreciate it. Thank you. Here are some more details about upcoming JDRF fundraisers hosted by Ford KTP. The 2019 JDRF Open Car Motorcycle and Craft Show is September 15th at the Louisville Water Tower Park. You can check out cool cars, enter raffles, visit craft booths, plus enjoy great food. And if you can't make any of the events, KTP is also hosting a raffle to win a new car. A $10 ticket could win you a Ford valued, valued up at uh, over $35,000. You can find more information on how to buy a ticket on FordKTPCares.com. Rick, I can see you're not leaving that corner of the nope. phone bank. Nope. I am You're going to get her. I'm going to hang in there. I'm <laughs> going to wait it out. Thanks, we Jeff. have uh, seven of our eight phone lines are currently busy. So let's keep uh, keep the phones calling. That's what we like to hear. Busy numbers. Shirley Patricia Risher, a $100 pledge. Uh, she is the mother, she says. Peggy Short, $50. Thank you so much for your donation tonight. Peggy Kamer called in with a $300 pledge. Nice big check for us coming that way. Emily Murphy, a $50 pledge tonight as well. Ha <laughs> ha. Brooklyn Reamer. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? All right, you are... Uh, a student at E-Town High School? Yes. Okay. Uh, we've been talking about Rufus. Now, you said you used Rufus when you were diagnosed uh, with diabetes. How many years ago was this? Um, eight years ago. Eight years ago. All right. Tell folks, what, are you, what does Rufus help the kids uh, with? Um, it made me more comfortable with pricking my finger by myself and giving myself my shots on my legs and stomach. So, it, I mean, each spot, it, do, you, do you practice giving shots like Rufus has little soft spots? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay, and then what else? He has other... He has some on his stomach, and then on his hips, hmm. and his arms. So there's Rufus, and that's important. And the uh -huh. technology, it's, it's amazing. You have a glucose monitor hooked to you as yes. well, right? And it rings to your phone to, to tell you every five minutes it updates? Yes, it does. Right? How much that's made life a lot easier. You're not pricking your finger every hour. Yeah, right? it definitely has. All right. Well, we finally got you. Thank you. We appreciate <laughs> you being here and helping us out. Any shout out to all your friends at E-Town? You want to say call in and help us with some money? <laughs> Please call in. <laughs> it right. would help a lot. Thank you, Brooklyn. All right. Emily Murphy with a $50 pledge tonight and Bill Titus with a $20 pledge as well. Sue Derner with a $100 donation to help JDRF. Let's go back over to Jay and Vicki. Thanks, Rick. As we've mentioned, type 1 isn't always diagnosed at a young age. At WLKY's Julie Dolan introduces us to Sam Ulrich, who learned he was diabetic after graduating college. Go! 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 Thanks to a life-saving diagnosis eight years ago, Sam Ulrich is able to maintain a family and his health. I got just really, really sick one day. Um, and I, was, I couldn't hold down any fluids, and I was just like on the couch. I thought I had a stomach bug uh, that was pretty bad. He remembers it like it was yesterday. An eventual trip to the ER and several days in the ICU would confirm Sam had type 1 diabetes. They said, oh, you're diabetic. And I was like, no, I'm not diabetic. And they were like, yeah, you are. From there, it was, 
All right, you're a type one diabetic. Here's a prescription. Walgreens closes in like 30 minutes, so you should probably head over there first. Though he's now able to sit at the table and enjoy his kids each night, he says it was initially a major lifestyle change. And being a private person made things like checking his blood sugar in public or declining food at a party difficult. His wife, Brittany, helped. It's, it's tough, I think, to see the emotional toll that it takes on somebody with type one diabetes because it never goes away. It's just part of his every single day. I think of it as like having a third child, like you, you never stop having diabetes. You don't get to go to sleep and not think about it. You just, it's always there. But luckily, technology has improved. And thanks to his pump, he's no longer injecting insulin or checking his blood sugar up to 10 times a day. You know, just trying to keep up with like the latest technology uh, on that front. It can be exciting because I like gadgets to begin with, but um, you know, even, even little bits of difference like not having to inject yourself four times, just doing it once every few days is like a world of a difference. Yeah, um, and I am at least grateful that um, there's so much research that goes into the different types of treatments and um, medical devices so that if our kiddos did have them, um, I know there's things now where you can like remotely manage a child's insulin. The kids know about dad's condition and Sam wants others to know too that if they have questions or need help adjusting to a new diagnosis or technological advancements through a community program at JDRF, he's just a phone call away. Almost a year ago I just decided that um, uh, I wanted to be more involved in the community, especially when I heard about the community connections program that they had for pairing up uh, people that are already a part of like the type one nation. Uh, with, with people that recently find out because if I had had that program when I had first found out I would have definitely taken you know taken it up uh. Okay, we'd like to welcome dr. Priyanka Bakhtiani. Uh, she's a pa pediatric endocrinologist with U of L physicians Novak Center for Children's Health And she's here to talk a little bit about some of the technology where we've been and where we're going There have been a lot of advances in technology over the last few years. Tell us about them Definitely so 40 years ago telling someone that they had type 1 diabetes was essentially like giving them a life sentence People had to boil their urine to see what their sugar was Blood glucose monitors were the size of human babies. Wow. Insulin was slow. People had to have fixed meals at fixed times and still had complications. In contrast, now we have devices the size of quarters that will send your blood sugars to your phone every five minutes. If your blood sugars are dropping, it'll let you know, remind you to do something about it. There are really smart insulin pump devices that will adjust the amount of insulin you're getting depending on what your blood sugar is at that time. There are remote controlled. I'm going to be a model for this. <laughs> there are remote controlled waterproof devices that allow parents to give their child insulin even without having the child you know needing to step out of the swimming pool so you know the reality right now is that with all of this revolutionary technology at the tip of our fingertips yeah. diabetes has never been simpler and more effective or diabetes care has never That's been great more news effective. all right mm -hmm. so technology now versus back long ago has come just light years talk about the future Definitely. So the future, the, the face of diabetes care is changing as we speak. There's already implantable sensors in the market. We're waiting with bated breath for the bionic pancreas to get approved. And then there's so much research ongoing about islet cell transplants, or as we affectionately like to call it, the cure. But I guess until type one becomes type none, we will continue to reveal in this wonderful technology that we have right now. Any disadvantages in the rapidly changing technologies? For sure, so as you know, you know, like any piece of technology, this is a double-edged sword. Um, there could, uh, this technology could be expensive and may not be affordable right. by everyone. And then any, any child who has a piece of technology will need to have all of their caregivers get used to it and be as involved as they could be. Um, a lot of times in teenagers and young adults, we see that they let the pumps or technology go into autopilot mode and forget to take boluses for their food, forget to take insulin, and that can end up being life-threatening and really dangerous. So. You know, there's benefits and risks to everything. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bakhtiani, thank you so much for joining us. We it's do appreciate been such it. A pleasure.
pleasure. Thank you. All right. So it's very important for you to donate so we can raise money to help in the research to advance these technologies. Definitely. Right. Thank you, Doctor. Rick, back to you. Give us some money. All right, 893-3232. <laughs> hey, we got a little silence going here. When you get those phones ringing, Zach is here. His sister has diabetes. Angela has diabetes herself. She's taking a call right now. She's getting a $25 pledge from Jenny Drewski, looks like. Thank you so much. David Markham called in with a $100 pledge tonight. Thank you so much. David Masterson with a $100 pledge. William Lyle, $100. Thank you very much. Anna Dobb, $50 pledge. Thank you so much. In memory of Sandra Holliday. Gina Mitchell called in tonight with a $25 pledge. Thank you. 893-3232, once again, is the number to call. Carol Furrow with a $25 pledge. And we want to thank Mel Melody uh, for her $50 pledge tonight, uh, tonight to help us out with JDRF. Louie needs to get his phone ringing. Zach needs to get his phone ringing. Well, let's see. Ah, this is uh, Glenn Patrick Fitzsimmons, $5 pledge uh, in memory of uh, Gerald Robert Fitzsimmons would have been his ninth birthday. That's what? 69th. 69th, sorry. It would have been his 69th birthday. Thank you so much, Zach. That's what it is. Call in, give us a pledge, and uh, help folks out in honor of uh, people here tonight, and we'll help our future generations as well. 893-3232. Vicki, Jay? Thank you, Rick. A local teenager's life changed within a matter of weeks once she and her family realized she had type 1 diabetes. After the initial panic and confusion, she eventually turned her focus towards advocacy. WLKY's Stefan Dingle shares her story. I was diagnosed on January 31st, 2018, and the Christmas before, I had gotten sick with strep right before Christmas. It was an agonizing two weeks during the holidays. Mary Claire Fultz was tired, weak, bedridden, and could barely stomach any food. I was drinking gallons of water every day, getting up three, four times a night to use the restroom, uh, just constantly thirsty, so hungry. Even when I just ate, it was just never ending. <laughs> I really didn't think that much about it because she had a lot of grit and determination and in hindsight she was fighting through it and she's a fighter and she was showing strength to try to cope with how badly she was feeling. Before heading back to school at Sacred Heart Academy, Mary Claire went to the doctor to get all the necessary vaccinations. And that's when they found ketones in my urine sample. And from there it was diabetes and to the hospital. <laughs> Her father, Ben, was out of town on business when he got the call from his wife, Clara. So he hopped on the quickest flight he could to comfort his daughter while imagining all the horrible things about this disease. The whole most stupidest thing I did was download every article and read it, and then get in a car and drive as fast as I can, praying to the hospital. Facing a new reality, Mary Claire came to grips with it as she attended a father-daughter dance at her school, fresh off her diagnosis. I think when I was at the dance and ordering off the menu and then just, I think that was like my first time thinking about, okay, if I order this, you know, how many carbohydrates is that going to be? So how much insulin do I want to take? But, you know, I'm at the dinner table with all my friends. It was just so overwhelming at first. As she and her family learned, the disease is simply a speed bump in their lives. Now Mary Claire is a youth ambassador for JDRF, inspiring other teens to continue to live their lives despite the hand they may have been dealt. Just live your life as you normally would because diabetes isn't your life, it's just a part of you. Okay, we're joined now by Mary Claire, her sister Lena, mom Clara, and also dad Ben. Welcome, guys. We appreciate you being here. Mary Claire, l let me talk to you a little bit. Uh, how long has it been since your diagnosis, and, uh, and how has life changed for you? Uh, so I was diagnosed on January 31st, 2018, so about 18 months. Um, my life has changed. I've definitely become more aware of what I put into my body, how I treat it, you know, exercise and healthy foods is sure. very big. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see a lot of smiles here. It looks like a happy family to me, <laughs> but I know you guys have had to do some adjustment yourselves because of the diagnosis. 
really in the initial diagnosis there is so much to learn about this in order to manage it in particular to manage it well uh, we had to learn how to manage medication initially with shots and finger pricks and we are so thankful for the technology that it does allow her to live a, you know more carefree lifestyle and and a normal life of a teenager but it was a big family effort to help with all that. Her younger sister here loves to cook. She's experimented with recipes and we've had so much support, which we're just so thankful for from, you know, the JDRF community, from so many friends and uh, family, extended family, and uh, a tremendous uh, support from school. That's very important, I think, uh, younger ages on up through high school. In, in helping to manage this. You'll end up being a specially Michelin star chef cooking for <laughs> diabetics, right? Well, let's talk about that. How, is, how has it changed your life with Big Sister having type 1? Well, it's definitely been a little bit more something that you would have to notice, like, if it was just two, the two of us home alone and, like, her alarm was going off and I would have to notice and be like, okay, so your high blood sugar, take care of that. And, uh, yeah, cooking, too. More responsibility, certainly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a youth ambassador to your sister, but you are a youth ambassador to others. How are you helping them out? Uh, well, I became a Jader of Youth Ambassador really for the reason because uh, when I was in the hospital, they did so much for me. So I really just wanted to learn more about the organization and give back to the community as much as I could. And, Dad, finally, from before Mary Clara was, was diagnosed to now, how has the whole family come together and how has life changed and what's the outlook going forward? Well, the outlook's going to be great. It is great. <clears throat> and uh, it definitely changes how you view anything you're going to do. So it used to be if you're traveling on vacation, you want to make sure you have your swim trunks. Now we have to make sure we have enough insulin and a, a glucose monitor, et cetera. And, you know, how JDRF has affected our family uh, you know, we're we're lucky that she was diagnosed in 2018 and not 1918 sure. right. or, or 1958. Right. And as you read about the technology and the advances from very generous people that we will never meet and very smart doctors and very smart uh, research scientists, you know, before you meet people who have been battling or, or living, surviving really with diabetes from decades ago, and they were just trying to stay alive. Mm -hmm. And now with JDRF, people can actually live their life. And so it's not just simply staying alive, but it's living your life that God gave you. Absolutely. And that's what we're thankful to JDRF for. Well, thank you so very much for coming in and sharing your story. We so appreciate it. Yeah, we certainly do. It's great seeing you all. Yeah. Rick, we need some money for research. Yeah. Get yes, those phones ringing. We've got about 12 minutes to go, and we want a strong finish, folks. Eight phones here. I want to see Ashley's phone ringing. Zach, got to get your phone. Louie, we got to get you going. Angela, don't need your phone to ring right now. Okay. You've been dealing with diabetes for 28 years 20, of your life? Yes. Mm -hmm. What has that been years. like for you? And you, you've seen it all through the years. Um, it's been hard. You know, I would say it's actually easier. That's a difficult word to use with that. But it's, it's more tolerable now with all the technology. So... It's, it's easier for me to deal with it. So you've seen what the funds can do and how they can make your life easier. And are you confident that in your lifetime we're going to have a cure? Uh, that is my, always my hope. I don't ever like to say it is definitely there, but that is my hope. All right, so. let's get the phones ringing. We've got, uh, what, two of them that are going right now? Six more. Strong finish, folks. We need your help. JDRF 893-3232. Joyce Money called in with a $40 pledge. Debbie Reynolds, $100. Thank you so much. Phil Watson, $50. Rosemary called in with a $100 pledge. I like that sound. Ashley's phone's ringing. Uh, Margaret called in with a $50 pledge. And Anthony called in tonight with a $35 pledge. 893-3232. Vicki, Jay, we're going to have that strong finish. Get those phones ringing, folks. Help us out here. Raise money for research to end type 1 diabetes. Guys? We're ready for it. Thanks, Rick. Mark Rocky is the managing director of the Fifth Third Private Bank as well as president of the board of directors for the Kentucky Atta chapter of JDRF. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate okay, Mark, let's talk about how prevalent type 1 diabetes really is. Absolutely. So there's about 1.25 million people in the United States who have T1D now. 
uh, over in, in recent years, about 21% increase in that number. And what's most alarming is we're predicting by 2050, uh, about 5 million people will be affected by type 1 diabetes. 600,000 of those will be children. So, How does money that we raise here at this telethon and the walks that we're talking sure. about help JDRF help people? Absolutely. So um, in 2018 alone, we raised $129 million dollars uh, at events like our walk and other in the telethon and other things like that for a total of about 226 million nationwide. Um, of that, about 80 cents on every dollar goes to uh, funding the mission of JDRF. That's great. Which is wonderful, yes. right? So we're very proud of that. Um, and you know what we do is we're involved in 70 clinical trials with, uh, with current humans. And that is um, beta cell encapsulation, that's artificial pancreas, uh, dealing with the complications associated with type 1 diabetes, uh, prevention of type 1 diabetes, all those things, insulin replacement, all those things are what the dollars that we're raising here, the very important dollars, are going to, to, to help uh, families that are affected by this. And some of those are on the cusp of ha happening right now. Absolutely. We're very excited for the future, right? Uh, we, we're waiting with bated breath to, to find a cure for, for, for type 1, and, and we think we're pretty close. Yeah, some of the technology we didn't even hear of That's you know, right. 10, 15 years Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. You have a personal connection with type 1 diabetes. Talk about that. I do. So my daughter, Mary Rose, uh, was diagnosed when she was 12. Uh, she's now 19. So she is a uh, college junior and uh, just settled into her dorm uh, just a couple weeks ago and doing well. So you know, we're very thankful, and that's why I'm involved with JDRF, because JDRF was there at the beginning for us. Um, my wife's father had a uh, had type 1, so we kind of grew up with it. But ne until you experience it yourself yeah. around that kitchen table, as, uh, as the Fultz has said, you can't really deal with it unless you've got that support of JDRF. So. Sometimes we look at my mom and go, really, you're going to eat that just because of what you have <laughs> to right. do to have that? Absolutely. So, you know, the, the, the technology, the research, and just the support of JDRF has been really a life saver for us. All right. yeah. Thank you, Mark, for being Absolutely. with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, good to see you. Absolutely. Thank Thanks. you, Mark. All right, Rick, what's going on over there at the phone banks? Oh, oh you know what? Going. I am so happy. Look <laughs> at this. All of them. And Angela's just rang, so there we go. Paula's there. Trista's there. Cheryl's there. Brooklyn's there. Ashlyn's got her phone. Zach, Louie. That's the sound we want to hear. Strong finish, folks. Brittany Yeager, $50 pledge. Thank you so much. Miriam Ray, a $25 pledge tonight. Michael Shook called in with a $50 pledge. Thank you, Michael. Ronald Selton with a $25 pledge. Becca Kamer with a $50 pledge. Meredith Bell, a $50 pledge. Carolyn Hollenbaugh, $10, $25 from Nancy Bruner. Uh, Jason Grimes, $20. And Robert Blankenship called in with a uh, pledge for us tonight as well. This was great, folks. We said we wanted to get the phones ringing, and all of a sudden they, they were going to... No, oh, no name, but Louie got a $500 pledge. That's what we're talking about. Thank you all so much. Vicki, Jay, the phones will keep ringing until 8 o'clock, 893-3232. They're ringing pretty good over they there are, right yeah. now anyway. Hey, joining us right now is retired UPS pilot and current JDRF board member Pete Verholt. Welcome, Pete. How are you, sir? Good. Thank you for having me. Pete us. is the advocacy it. chair for the local JDRF chapter. Why is advocacy so important for this mission? Well, our JDRF advocates are the ones who build and sustain our support for federal funding for type 1 diabetes research with our members of Congress. We do this because they need to understand the, the emotional, the financial, and the medical difficulties of living with type 1. We set up meetings personally, both in Washington, D.C. and local district offices, so they can see firsthand what it's like to deal with type 1. Okay, Pete, what is the focus of the team for the current year? We've got a very ambitious agenda this year for advocacy, beginning with the Special Diabetes Program. It provides $150 million annually for type 1 research, uh -huh. and it expires September 30th. So right now, our focus is getting that renewed. We have great bipartisan support. We have 68 U.S. Senators and 376 U.S. Representatives who signed the letter of support. Hopefully we can get it done, but we're caught up in the process right sure. now. Sure. Why did you get involved with JDRF? Do you have a personal connection? Yes. My daughter, Victoria, was diagnosed in 2005 when she was 11. It was uh, a total shock to us. We had no history in the family. So we've been involved with JDRF ever since. All right, Pete, thanks very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. We All appreciate right, you. All right, good luck. All right, uh, Rick, uh, 
What's going on? We've got to get those phones ringing. How's it going over there? Uh, we are getting phone calls after phone calls. And uh, Wyatt uh, and uh, Sophie's grandmother called in with a $200 pledge. Thank you so much. Molly Grant, $100 pledge. Thank you so much. Lamont Hustle called in with a $6 pledge. Look at this. We talked about that strong finish. That's why I love this community. These phones are just ringing off the hook right now. 893-3232. Folks like Betty Stroud called in with a $25 donation. Peggy Cunningham, $35. Thank you, Peggy. David Masterson, $100. David Markham called in with a $100. Don Reynolds, $40. Thank you so much. Kermit Caswell, $50 a check. Thank you so much. And Maurice and Dee Allgreyer. Uh, $25. We want to thank everybody for calling in tonight. This has just been wonderful. Keep them coming all the way up to 8 o'clock. All of our volunteers are here. Brooklyn's smiling. She's the only one that doesn't have her phone going. We appreciate uh, you being here and helping us out. Uh, thank you for all your pledges and donations. Keep it coming. It's a worthwhile cause. JDRF is near and dear to all of our hearts. Vicki, Jay? Thank you, Rick. We want to take a moment to thank some generous sponsors of the upcoming JDRF One Walk. Ford has pitched in $35,000 toward that walk. And the Wendy Novak Diabetes Center is a $25,000 sponsor of the walk. And Lando Frost has kicked in an additional $17,500. We thank you all so much for your support. And again, the JDRF One Walk is October 19th at Churchill Downs. Okay, as we talked about earlier in the show, another big event for JDRF is the Promise Gala. The 2020 Gala will be on February 29th at the Marriott downtown. This this is video from the gala earlier this year at the Henry Clay. I had my good friend Julie Dolan step in and MC for me back in that uh, back in March while I was covering some severe weather. But I'll be uh, back to MC the event this coming February. For more information and ticket sales, we will be uh, having that up on the JDRF website very very soon. We've got about four minutes. The phone lines are still open, so give us a call, 893-3232. You're looking at the tote board of the money that we raised tonight. Tonight only, $5,000. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah. It's been good. We appreciate all the help that people uh, have, have given us tonight. And it's amazing the walk that's slated for uh, the early and mid part of October. We're going to go after $500,000. And in the past, every time we've gone towards a certain amount, We've made it, so it's looking really good. We want to see you there uh, at Churchill Downs. Churchill Downs uh, and also Lexington at Kroger Field. We've got two walks coming up. we we'll raise a lot of money there. For more information on those, just go to JDRF.org. Of course, this is a, you see the phone lines are open there. Rick, the phones are still ringing despite the fact that you left them. You know, we've got <laughs> some great people in this community that are helping us out tonight and all these wonderful volunteers here taking your pledges for JDRF. Uh, we just, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you, folks. It's, you know, your mom, you mentioned your mom. She's near and dear to my heart, right. Jay's heart. And I mean, uh, it's all about people. You know someone that has diabetes exactly. that's affected by it. It's not something that you see, and it's something people manage so that they don't talk about. Yeah. And the, we have another total. Let's see if they can put that up. Fifty-six hundred now. It's now fifty-six hundred. So yeah, moving up six hundred dollars like that. Hey, it's all about making type one, type none, and we want to yeah. thank you for your support. Thanks so much.